I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is Bleed Me Another Acid Bath. Mm hmm. Shout out to Aiden. Uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to Aiden. <laughs> uh, we're supposed to shout you out. For timely topical political commentary, you can hit us up at Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Dio Beluga will be making a return very soon. Having said that, if you, dare listener, would like your song reviewed, one dollar to get to in a Patreon, and uh, you join an alliance, and then uh, that helps determine what songs we use. If you are a Ronin and you don't want to be part of no crew, you're just gonna go dolo, like we say in the hood. One twenty-five Vinitsoy merch at gmail.com via PayPal will get you straight to the head of the line. Having said that. This is Acid Bath, Bleed Me, and Ocean. Yikes, that's a lot of blood. Let the brightness roll.
was a very interesting, disturbing song. Oh no, I really liked it. <laughs> really? Yeah, shout out to postpartum, I guess. <laughs> Just like a raindrop, I was born baby There were some fall. really good lines. Yeah, but then it says... That's a good one. And scale these prison walls. I guess raindrops do that, too. What? Do they? If what you're you scaling it, you're going over the prison wall. So, yeah, you were just like a rain rub, you were born to fall, but at the same time, you're not staying there. You're going to scale the prison walls. And I guess go... Yeah, but I don't I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> Something with this painted. In the universe of cool. this song. I don't know if this is a good thing. He said something. That that line was pretty disturbing. And, it was and, over before you were born, sucked into the vacuum of this universal tomb. Yeah, that, that line is crazy. It was over before you were born. Well, not that line, but the sucked into the vacuum of the universal tomb because I literally thought of abortion. When obviously, I said that. yeah, like, obviously he's alluding to abortion, where you know these these little children are sucked into these vacuums. But what's interesting is is that I think he's talking about birth, mm -hmm. where you're born into the universe, mm -hmm. which is kind of this vacuum because you're the kid basically has no choice. I mean, mm -hmm. he's being pulled. By a force that's obviously more powerful than him in the contraction, and so he's 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 sucked into. So it was just in, it was very ironic. It's 1996 the, too. I don't know at that point were they still using those weird vacuums to bring babies out of wombs? Remember that they'd suck it on their head and. I don't I don't even remember that, but I mean, if the guy was in if the song came out in '96 and he was let's say in his 30s, so let's say he was around in the 60s. I've never heard of that. I've only heard about vacuums and wombs in um, regard to... I think it like fit onto their head or something like that. <clears throat> a vacuum-assisted vaginal delivery a healthcare provider applies a vacuum or a soft rigid cup with a handle and a vacuum pump to the baby's head to help guide the baby out of the birth canal. This is typically done during a contraction while the mother pushes. I mean, that... Isn't that weird? That's Mayo Clinic, and that seems that's August 18th, 2020, so... Yeah, but I don't know if they're still doing that. I mean, it's August 18th is when that article came out so I mean, that's the freaking mayo clinic so that pro i'm sure it probably still happens um there's no way i'd let somebody put a vacuum on my baby's head to suck them out that's your sorry if you provider allow might your doctor to do recommend that, vacuum extraction during the second stage of labor when you're pushing if labor isn't progressing or the baby's health depends on an immediate delivery uh why it's done yeah i mean it's still done it's, it's, I mean, I mean, is it less intrusive than a C-section? I just feel like it could be dangerous. If somebody says... Oh, no, I'd much rather them do a C-section than put a vacuum on their head. I feel like putting a vacuum on their head is pretty dangerous. Like, they've got their soft spot there, and there's, like, this suction. I don't think we'd be practicing it in 2020 if it was, if that was happening. I'd, if they said, we're going to put a vacuum, or you can have a C-section, and you know how against C-sections I am, I would take a C-section. Yeah, I, I, I think they would probably not use the term vacuum. <laughs> I, I think that they would. I think that they would use something else. But but either way, like that's a brilliant use of the metaphor. Um, like basically, you know, the, in the universe of this song, it's it's just better to you know. The, they're characterizing a birth as an abortion, and you're being born into. A horrible universe. This is this is sort of like the antinatalism. Antinatalism is to some degree a logical extension of certain other views of the world. So it's it's very graphic, crazy uh, line. But uh, that was a that was a line, man. I was like, holy shit, that's such a good line. I mean, I don't I don't believe that the universe is a tomb. But if I didn't believe what I believed, then I, I I'd be like, well, that's a really mm -hmm. really good line. Um, Old Blossom dies like a young man breathes. The insects hum with their hunger and grieve. An icon of pale bone, static white dream. Blind in the wilderness, everybody scream. I couldn't find my way out the door. We all died and woke up on the floor. Whew. That, that's a... <laughs> I, I mean, I'm trying to look back at times. In, I mean, there have been times that I've been extremely, extremely dark. Especially in high school. I was extremely dark because just the genetic issues in my family and depression and then so much violence is around me and, and seeing all those things and uh, I got to be pretty dark but you know I don't know if I've ever gotten to this place where like it just looks like a cycle of life thing when he's talking about the insects 
you know, because mm-hmm. yeah. of the, you know, the way that insects get associated with dead bodies or whatever. You know, it's kind of a weird circle of life type of situation. The insects oh, hum see. with their hunger and grieve. So weird. See, I, I got the, the blo- as the blossom eats the butterfly. Command F it. You'll see it right there. Right there. Yeah, some of that. No, where? Well, look, it's right there. Like a young man breathes, the insects hum with their hunger and grieve. So, you know, it's talking about death and a young man and his breath and all that, but then it talks about the insects humming with hunger and grief. Which, you know, again, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, this poor guy, he's dead, but we are hungry. So we're going we're gonna to eat. So it's just yeah. It's a it's it seems to be like a weird kind of macabre cycle of life type of situation, an icon of pale bones, static white dream, you know, blind in the wilderness. Everybody screams. So like you're you're in the world and all that, and then you're just gonna you're just gonna be there as your worm food. That's pretty much the sum total mm-hmm. of your body and the value of your body. Um, and then I ride the painted horse. She gives a good universal scream. Maybe that's him saying that he's he's just gonna um, he's just gonna sex away all of his nihilism and enjoy the time that he has. Yeah, but he talked about with this with this young lady, whoever she the is. The taste of dead sex on his tongue, so it like sounds like it's not as great as. And yeah, there was I knew, something else. I knew else. you were gonna come back with that horrible line. I was like, I'm going to ignore that yeah, line. It was pretty good. I, I did mean, feel a little bit good. sick to my stomach when I read that. A little. <laughs> A little, little, and then he said I was sexless in clouds again. <laughs> I was chasing a co- yeah. That, that I was like, oh, this is good. He's having some esoteric experience where he gets beyond the necessity for. Well, yeah, he for, said I've become bored with flesh and bone again. Yeah, it's like at some point it's like okay, you know, this is the same drill over and over again. There's got to be something bigger than that. <laughs> like that, that's the thing. It's like no sexuality is fine i guess but it's it's one of those things where i mean like it's it's necessary to propagate the race so but at the same time it's like at some point you've got to say to yourself is there anything beyond this and like i i just think that especially for me like i've always like wanted to to like tap because i've always felt like there's like some transcendent thing that i was missing that was my that's that was my thing like i felt like i was missing some like giant like transcendent experience so it was a lot of like even as a little kid like I was always like okay you know how do I get there because you know being around church especially Pentecostals like you're always seeing all this like so like when I was introduced to the whole concept of you know sex whatever like yeah it was definitely hey young and exciting and oh my god look at you know whatever but at the same time like I I always had that like wanting to be in the clouds I would much rather I don't know. It, it's it's hard. It's hard to explain. And anytime I try to talk about it, it always comes out the wrong way. <laughs> so it's like it always ends up like looking like wrong. But I, I thought that was an that was an interesting juxtaposition. I was sexless in the clouds again. I was chasing a cold, cold wind. I became bored with flesh and bone again. The deepest alone. I was riding the turbulence and ocean of Hades. It's all downhill from here on the outer nowhere. I feel like he wrote that in a plane. Like, like, one of the secrets that people, like, don't really Maybe. think about, unless you're a writer, is that songs do not generally all get written in one sitting. Like, for me, mm-hmm. it's very, very rare. Like, I've got five songs. I've got, like, five songs in my head right now. It is extremely rare that a song is written, like, in one sitting A to Z. Mm-hmm. So, like, I could just see him, like... Okay, um, let's work on the sign. He's in a plane. He talks about, you know, he's in the clouds and he's got, uh, he's riding the turbulence and ocean of Hades, you know, and I think he's yep. maybe like looking at his uh, mortality and then saying it's all downhill from here because either the plane is going to crash because he's in turbulence or it's going to land. Either way, it's downhill. Like the guy is a very, very smart writer. And I, I just feel like, like yeah. when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, here we go. Like I'm, I'm. I'm thinking like this is what he's talking about. Like he was in a plane, and there you go. Let the blackness roll on. You bleed so easy. 
Yeah, that part was pretty crazy at the beginning. Um, Mother's cool. Believe me, in ocean. Believe me, in ocean tonight. Um, where was the one where you bleed so easily? Well, he said, "Take it easy, you bleed, you bleed so, so easy." Yeah. He he says that like throughout the entire right, right, entire song. Uh, what did that mean to you? You bleed so easy. Oh, it just made me think of like when it said, "Let the blackness roll on," like. Um, Unfortunately, when I go in through my bouts of depression, there's always self-harm is always like a major theme that I have to not do or not think about. So take it easy, you bleed so easy is, it was just like the, and then bleed me an ocean, bleed me an ocean tonight. Like the, when you're, I was just thinking about like depression and when you're suffering in that and how you just want to bleed. Yeah, I took that as the the fragility of human life that people that it's so easy to, to draw blood from a human being because our lives are so fragile. They're just it, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing to me. Like like I, I, I you know you, you listen to these guys from Chicago. I just got done listening to a biography. One of these guys got shot twenty one times. He's still alive. He doesn't look like he's in good shape. Uh, he, well. he's actually out of shape. The guy. And, and then the other guy, Vaughn, he gets shot twice, he's dead. It's just the, the fragility yeah. of human Never life. Never can tell. And it, the other thing that, that, that's really fascinating to me about death and, and how it's like, now that we have social media and things like that, because before, back in the day, like, you, oh, so-and-so died, and then, you know, you'd see a picture of them on the news or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's still a still photograph, so there's a sense in which they're dead, because mm -hmm. it's like, but now it's like... I go through this ritual. Oh, somebody died, blah, blah, blah. You go to Facebook and you see them talking. You see the video and you see them talking. And you see what they post and you see what's on their mind and things like that. It's like, holy shit, man. Like, this guy was, like, two days ago, he's alive. He had thoughts. He had all this. Yeah. And now, you know, yeah. boom, he's gone. COVID, boom, mm -hmm. gone. Like, I was watching this, um, you know, I was watching the uh, this, this thing that's called Valuetainment or whatever. It's about these mobsters. And uh, he interviews, like, these are real live mobsters, killers, whatever. You had Frank Collada, and he was in all these legendary moments in, in the mob, you know, mythology or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's in shootouts, he's in this, there's attempted hits on his life, he survives all of it, and then he dies of COVID. It's just like, it's like, it's just, the, the fragility of human life is something yeah. that, that is something that has always, always, always I don't want to use the word fascinating because it almost sounds sacrilegious, but it, I've always been fascinated by just how quickly you could just be signed off, like, period, like, mm -hmm. boom. And, and, it, and it's so... And people, like... On the one hand, it's very hard to kill people. Like, as far as, like, actually accomplishing it, you know, it's like you're shooting someone, and it's, like, it's not easy. It's not like... I always say, it's like not like in the movies where you, like, hit somebody in the... But, like... But on the other hand, it's so easy to die. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing. Like, I wrote a song one time that that you know I was on a trip. I was coming back and I, I you know I I like destroyed it and threw it away. <laughs> but like, that was one of the lines. It's like it's very hard to kill, but it's really easy to die. It was mm -hmm. one of the lines because it was yeah. just it was just yeah. you know the thing that was on my mind at the time. But it, it's like. That's one of the things, that's like one of the greatest mysteries of the world to me is like, who gets it, who doesn't? This guy is standing here. If he would have stood three inches here, yeah. nothing would have happened to him. This bullet traveled here. If it would have been like a half a scintilla of a centimeter here, you would have been dead. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. Like, like, just weird, man. Like, the fragility of human life and then the the tenacity of, of the human will to live, like, both of those things coming together mm -hmm. is, is just like a... And, and seeing some of that stuff work out, you know, like I'm listening to myself. I'm like, man, I'm I'm crazy as hell. Like, <laughs> like this is crazy. Uh, I look, I'm like, okay, I, this band is probably not going to be a ten thousand view thing. I'm like, okay, this is good because I don't want people knowing how crazy I am. But death is just a, a very very fascinating thing. So that's what it looked like to me. It just looked like a weird cycle of life thing. He starts off. Um, talking about how he was born out of his, I'm assuming, his mother's reptilian womb. This is a very interesting 
uh, line. Yeah. And then I'm not even going to get into my interpretations of uh, the second stanza. I'm just going to skip over that. But uh, very, very graphic stuff. But, uh, you know, sonically, like the, the instrumentation in 96, like, I don't know, because this, this is not a black metal song. This is kind of like, you know, like... I liked it. I loved the vocal style. But I the, liked the trashy sound in there that well, you couldn't yeah, really hear good. Yeah, yeah, the guitar, like the production seemed to be purposefully under I underdone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, and, but, but then the other thing is, too, is when he... When he started getting like the de the demonic sound, like when he said it was over before you were born, mm -hmm. that was really interesting too. Because the way that they started the song, the guy's like a legitimate singer, like he's like a like this '96, kind, definitely kind of definitely in the end of the grunge era, but he kind of had a grungy style vocal style, mm -hmm. you know, you know, a little bit Pearl Jammy, a little bit Chris Cornelli, and then it like. And then you could hear underneath these, you know, little ad libs of, ah, yeah. And then, yep. And then, boom! It just comes on. Now, I thought that was really, really good because a lot of times, like, when you get that type of vocal style, people don't have the discipline to let it like creep up on you. Like, it becomes very, yeah. It, it becomes very like, okay, I know when this is going to happen. Like, if you listen to Cradle of Phil, there's Vaughn right there. Uh, you, and, and, like he's just you know, know and they got yeah. him up there like you know hey he's throwing up his gang sign it's yeah. good for you yeah boom boom okay well you're dead now so there you go now he's gone and this is all you have left of him it's crazy it's, it's, we're on genius.com and it's uh, crazy it's crazy to me there's like um, advertisements Vaughn is on there uh, rest in peace of King Vaughn inshallah um, but yeah man uh, just a very very interesting song and, and, and I, I love the discipline of like they didn't overdo that that vocal style either. Like they 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 perfect. they put it perfectly there, and then they pulled back and let the guy go back. Like it's it was perfect. I really it liked was it. Just perfect because it's like okay, something is wrong with this dude, but it's yeah, you know, it's different. Yeah. And this picture, the, the album strange. cover is very fascinating. I'm like, what in the world is happening here? Yeah, I've got like nine interpretations. Yeah, I've got a couple of them myself. Holy moly! What'd you get the song? Actually, a nine point eight. <clears throat> You're rating these songs high. Uh, it's because I really liked both of them. The solid eight dot eight, solid eight dot eight. Good song. Well, uh, it's a good song. It's a good song. Good song. Well, I kind of, I kind of wish the production was a little bit, little bit better. Not me. I liked it. But you, you like the grimy, the grime. I don't the, usually, the, but yeah, I did no, this one. Well, yeah, I was gonna say yeah, that's. One of the things that kind of surprised me. Yeah, usually I'm usually like, no, don't, no. You don't like that stuff. There you are, dear listener. Big out. Sorry, out. Gone.